So let's talk about the uh, wheel wells. Um, they've kind of been a pain point in this build and I made a few mistakes or measurements that are kind of based off some false assumptions, um, which kind of screwed me over a little bit. So I kind of wanted to get into that. Uh, basically, I made my initial wheel well framing about 40 inches uh, wide. And I based this measurement off of, Ford has a bodybuilder's layout book where they basically tell you how big the wheel wells need to be. And uh, that's for the factory 30 inch tire size. So I basically uh, increased that number based on our planned tire size, which is a 37. And I forget the exact height, but I want to say it was about 16 inches or so, how tall the wheel well was going to have to be for that. And that's kind of how I ended up with the, the full 40 inches wide because if the top of the tire is getting this high, you actually would have to clear the entire width of the tire at the subframe height. So that's kind of how I landed at this initial width. Um, and then it's not until recently I figured out that I can make the wheel wells way smaller, which is great from like an interior space perspective, but it's kind of been a pain to work with the dimensions I have and kind of shrink these wheel wells. So, it turns out on a factory van, the wheel wells are only about 10 inches high off of the, um, the vehicle frame. And with that said, one of the um, 4x4 vans you joined, I was talking with Justin, and he actually put his van uh, up on a forklift and fully flexed it out. And you can see with his van completely flexed out, um, he still has six inches of clearance between the top of the 10 inch wheel well and his 37 inch tire. And mine would essentially be the same configuration. So based off of those measurements, I get to make the wheel well way smaller in terms of height. And then with the tire not coming up as tall, that also allows me to shrink the width in. Um, so basically how I did that is I kind of built these extension pieces, which are cut at the same angle of the wheel well and then built this uh, one by two eighth inch wall aluminum framing. Um, right now everything's just tacked in place. It was an absolute pain to kind of get all these angles right and get everything just to align and be square. Um, but I got this side done, the other side is all cut so it should be pretty easy. And we now have way more space so our wheel well will only come up right at about seven inches off of our subframe height. Um, I gave plenty of clearance for a 37 in chains and gave a little bit of extra just in case. And based off of that, I was also able to shrink it in. So now the width at this point is only 33 and a half inches. And the idea behind that is our 37 inch tire, once it's fully stuffed, by the time it hits the top, um, it has no way of hitting either of these sides. So there's no reason for it to be that wide. Um, as far as how I actually like picked the angles of this and kind of framed that, that was something that took me a while to figure out. Um, I actually ended up using uh, Desmos, which is an online graphing calculator. And I basically was able to uh, plot the circle on the graph um, and then figure out whatever angles will match around the tire the best and give me uh, the tightest fit, looks good, and maximum room, um, which I'll go ahead and show some shots of that over this. but. Yeah, overall happy with how it turned out. The cutting, it was probably the biggest pain, um, but I got this side done. The other side is all ready to go and I'm gonna work on assembling that. So right now I'm gonna weld another one of these uh, frames together. I already made this one, which was actually intended for the other side, but I messed up on the dimensions and the, the parts I chose. So it actually works perfect for uh, this back corner, but I'm gonna go ahead and make another one of these. So I'm sure some of you will notice that 
using the spool gun. Um, everything else is going to be like the actual welds are all going to be TIG welded. Uh, the reason why I'm using the spool gun is it just kind of makes it easier for me to tack these things together, not have to worry about the foot pedal and just kind of quickly pull the trigger and get it tacked together. Um, I'm definitely not the best at welding. I have trouble with both the TIG and the spool gun. I will say the TIG create, or the, sorry, the spool gun creates a ton of uh, soot, um, but it's still good enough to be tacked together, so I'll be ground down and then I'll run a good bead once it's all finally in place um, with, uh, with the TIG. Just finished up the wheel well, pretty happy with how it turned out. It was kind of a pain to get all the angles right. So this part here is 40 degrees and then trying to get these two bars true relative to each other and then getting the top bar completely flat relative to the main frame was hard, but overall turned out pretty good. And the intention with this design is so that everything underneath is completely flat. So it'll be really easy to mount something up underneath there. And not too sure what I'm gonna put under there. I have considered doing like some uh, welded aluminum subframe boxes that a lot of people do. Not too sold on those just because of the cost, complexity, and then the weight kind of adds up when you fully box something in like that. So I might just end up doing some like outer skirts, which would just give the vehicle a finished look and uh, be nice and light. And then the space behind it still wouldn't go to use because I could put, you know, componentry or something back there. So next what I'm working on is putting the side trim on. So basically along the entire side, there's gonna be this uh, flat bar, which is gonna sit like that, be welded along the top, um, and then a little tack welds along the bottom. And that'll provide an edge basically along this whole piece for the panel to sit on. So gonna cut these up, try to get all these angles looking good, clamp it in place and weld it together.